Hello everyone, and welcome to my new episode on trainer editing, where with ESPRE, I'm going to show much more advanced things. But I want to give you a heads up here at the start, there's going to be a part two down the road. That's going to cover some things that we can't currently do with this tool, like adding new trainers. But in the meantime, this episode is going to have a lot of information for you. So let's get into it. All right, and first we will open the ROM in DSPRE. Like so. We got platinum. And okay, today we're talking about the trainer editor. Well, the main thing to notice here is this big old pick list here in the upper left, which has every trainer that is inside of this ROM. And this first one's here kind of a dummy file. So I'm going to jump to the first one that's actually a real trainer, which is Youngster Tristan. And OK, he'll be loaded in here into the editor. But from here, we can't really see on where is this trainer inside the normal game. So what I like to do is, let's see here, he's a youngster. So if I open up browser and I just type in youngster trainer class, like so. Bulbapedia has a really nice page for each trainer class where you can scroll down here and there'll be a list for each ROM that uses that class that you can expand and then you can see each trainer of that class. And there's Tristan. And even if I just hover over here, you can see right there, they're on Route 202, which I can click here and see Route 202 as well. And now that I know that, I can minimize this, go to the header editor, and type in 202 and hit go. And that's highlighted, so this is all loaded over here with 202's information. And if I jump to the events, I can see 202 and the trainers here. And if I right click them, I can see which ones that they are. Now, one thing I want to mention right now as things work is right here. It says youngster Tristan, but this is not a trainer. That's just loading in the first name. Like if I right click on this one, this one's actually lit up, set up as a trainer. That's, that's Logan. So if I click on her, that's Natalie. And if I click on this one, this is Tristan, and I can tell that because this is actually lit up this way. Knowing where they are is not really important directly for editing. I think it's just nice to know where you can kind of visually keep track of everything in your mind. Okay, if we go back over to the trainer editor, what can we do to Tristan? Well, the first thing is that we can pick what kind of trainer are they. Right now they're a youngster, but let's say they get a bit of an upgrade and they make them into a dragon tamer that will change what sprite they load in with when you go into a battle. And then if you do that, what you want to do over here in the event editor is also change the overworld sprite of what they look like to match, which I believe would be number 11 for a dragon tamer, which I looked into this. They use the same overworld sprite in platinum as the ace trainers do, which I never noticed. But as far as I can tell, this is how it would be in a normal ROM. And then what I do from here is save the event so this is now committed and I can come back over here. And then also what this has is a trainer class section, but it's important to know this edits the class itself. So any trainer using that class will have these changes affect them. Mostly it boils down to changing the class name where I can call it like Dragon Master. And then this is like a pick list where I can pick what music plays when the trainer sees you. But for now, I'm good for how they are. But OK, now I can rename him. Let's, let's do like a Taylor. And let's say Taylor is a little stronger. So they get to have a couple of full restore here. And what I can do, because this has a list of all the items I could hold. Some of them wouldn't really help them at all. But uh, I just type in full and I open up the list. It'll jump right to full restore. So I can just quickly give him two. And that saves a fair amount of time doing it that way. And then down here, this allows me to pick the kind of AI they used to battle with. And actually, you don't just pick one. Like, I could have them do a damage priority and also check HP. But if you want a visual example of how these are normally used, what we can do is just save our current changes here. Very good. Where you can see their name is now 
change the dragon tamer tailor. Oh, yes. And okay, we'll find another dragon tamer. I think they are pretty deep down. Way, way down. There we are. Let's go with uh, Hayden. Okay, it looks like they usually use Elevate Attack and Expert. Alright, so I'll just come back up to my guy here. And I will do the same. Okay. And now we're ready to upgrade what Pokemon that Taylor has. First, let's say they get to have three Pokemon, which will light up these boxes here. But you'll notice that these boxes are still grayed out. And what that is, is because these boxes here aren't checked. But what's cool is that with check moves off, I don't have to set any moves. The ROM will have internal coding that will determine what moves a Pokemon would have based on what level it is. So if you leave that off for most trainers that you set, you don't have to go through the work of picking what moves each Pokemon's gonna have they have to fight. And then if you want to pick it, you can just turn that on. And now you can pick each move as you want to. And then party items is just off, they wouldn't have any. But if you want them to have something special, you can just turn that on. And same thing here. But okay, this guy's a dragon tamer now, so let's give this one a Dragonite, which again, if I type in the name and open it, it jumps to that one. Eh, Garchomp. Like so, eh, you know, Rayquaza, why not? Why not? There we are. Let's say Dragonite's level 25, Garchomp's level 28, and Rayquaza's level 100. <laughs> this is going to be a doozy of a first fight, isn't it? Good, good. Okay, and Dragonite will have a Dragon Fang, which you can type that in, open it. There it is. Uh, Garchomp will have a Soft Sand. There we go. Oh, Quasa. Oh, yeah, let's give the Quasa leftovers. Go big or go home. And okay, let's just say Dragonite has Wing Attack. Wing attack. Dragon. Uh, dragon rage. Thunderbolt. And thunder wave. Garchomp will have earthquake. <laughs> Dragon Claw. Mud. Mud Slap. And Dig. And then Rayquaza will have... Hyper Voice. Screech. <laughs> Double Team. And Draco Meteor. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Though you may be wondering what these two settings are here. And these are part of what I want to discuss in part two once these things have been expanded upon. But I can say for now that this is the DV or PID value, which relates to the IV ability and nature of the Pokemon. They combine them into one hex value, so you can't set them individually. And this is the portion you saw me in the old video setting to set how many IVs each Pokemon had. Which, as I've learned, is mostly true, but a bit more complicated. So hopefully I can talk about that in part two. But right now the rule of higher number equals more IVs is still true. And then this other one is just a value where you can set a ball seal or a sticker for an effect to, to play when that Pokemon is sent out. Where each one of these numbers is a different effect, but you can't really tell which one it's gonna be. So right now it's mostly just trial and error until you get the one you want. But that's mostly it for editing a trainer. The last thing I could mention is uh, editing what the trainer says. 
which uh, we would need the text editor for. And in Platinum, we're looking at Archive 617, which is a long archive that just has everything any trainer says in the ROM. And since I picked the first trainer of the game, I know that their text is this one here. Which is what normally youngster Tristan says. Uh, here when he meets our eyes. Here when we beat him. Here if we talk to them after we beat them. Like just out there in the overworld. And then here at the start of the fight. If we're fighting them again with the Versus Seeker. Now I already explained how to edit these. In my text episode I also just put up. So you want to go over to that video if you want to see how to edit these. But okay. I think this is all set right here. So I'm going to go ahead and save current trainer. Which you're okay to jump between tabs without saving, but you don't want to scroll this or you're going to lose all your changes. And at the same time, you want to scroll up and down just to make sure all your changes are still there. And that thing saved successfully. So this looks good. So I can go ahead and save a new ROM. Put it right here in the desktop. I'll call it Terrible Taylor. Save. And there it is. And now the very first part of the game is extremely mean. Let's see those Pokemon YouTube channels take on this ROM. How many hours does it take to beat Terrible Taylor? In this really hard ROM hack, I'm saying. Anyway. As usual, I have some tips to show you as well. So let's say you're looking to do a double battle. And I know that a lot of double battles happen in Eterna Forest. There we go. And we want this one for the inside, which you can see that this has the overlay. Again, these previews are always Twinleaf Town, no matter which one you're looking at. But I can see by this that we're looking at the inside of uh, the forest. So if I open up events, and then I will jump from this map over here, which uses the same event file, 201, and we have these. So let's just look at, we have Psychic Lindsay and Psychic Elijah. And most of us know from experience, if you walk between these two, they will both see you and they will both fight you in a double battle. But if you talk to them individually, they will also fight you individually based on who they are on here. So if I was to come to the trainer editor and I go to, what was it, 205? There we go. And so there's Elijah and one down is Lindsay. And you can see that neither of these are set as a double battle or as a tag strategy. And that's because the game just has internal coding that says when you walk in between there, it will set up a double battle for you. And just combine whatever Pokemon that they have set in their party. But then at the same time, there are other trainers in the ROM that will always be a double battle, even if you talk to them. And an example of that, I believe, is number 55. Yeah, young couple, Ty and Sue. Okay, and if I just do my same trick from before, I just change youngster to young couple. Couple. <laughs> there we go. So young couple, I do the same trick of scrolling down to platinum, show, and there's Ty and Sue. And they're on 209, which again, right there. So if I come back into here, header editor, go to 209. I'd want to have the main one right here. And I can open events. I'll start here. But we're going to skip over to the part of Route 209 here. That has them listed. Where both of these are marked as Tai and Sue. So if you talk to them, it won't matter. Because they both reference the same fight down here. And then if we look at... 
them on here. They are marked as a double battle. And they have their two Pokemon set here. So these two will be set out at the same time. But you'll see these are also not set in the AI as a tag strategy. And that's because they're not using any moves like Helping Hand. So it's not necessary if you want to make a double battle. And then everything else from there should be the same as editing a single trainer that I showed before. Okay, and I think the only thing left from there is explain <laughs> is to explain the, the Angelicas and the Mickeys. And what I mean by that is if you look at this list, there are a lot of trainers named Mickey and Angelica. Mickey, Angelica, Angelica, Angelica. Okay, and you'll also see all these Angelicas and Mickeys use a level 5 Rattata. And these are unused trainers in the ROM. And I would love to be able to say that it's super simple just to repurpose these if you want to add more into your ROM. But unfortunately, trainers touch a lot of different parts of a ROM. They're in the event editor, they're in the text editor, they're in the script editor, and then obviously the trainer editor. There's a lot of things you have to line up to be able to add a new trainer into the ROM which is getting close to getting an editor, but not quite there yet. And like I said, that's my main focus when I want to make a part two once that becomes available. It is technically possible right now, but it's a little tricky to do and more than what I want to get into right now at the moment. But if you want to get ahead of things, you can come to the Discord and you either can discuss how this works or you can be on the front end when this tool releases with the editor and get it right away instead of having to wait for me to also make a video on it later. Because we're hoping to have this soon, but as you may expect, developing tools is pretty dang tricky. However, you can still move trainers around as you need to. Like if you're inserting new maps into a ROM to build your own areas, you do still have the option to open the events. And then add a new open world like so. Set it as a trainer. And pick any non-Angelica, Mickey, other unused trainer that you want. Like, I'll go with Youngster Michael and give them a Youngster Overworld Sprite to match. And then I can put them right there. Now, they'll say the same thing as the original Youngster Michael in the original ROM. So this is just if you're not going to use Michael somewhere else. You can now move Michael to be here onto any map that you want. So you just go back to the trainer editor. Locate Michael and then edit them as needed. But for now, this is it for part one, which I hope will still be much more useful than my old trainer episode with PPRE. That tool was functional, but very temperamental. So I am super excited to be able to show off this new editor that should not only make things work more consistently, but also give us more options to work with. But okay, so as usual, this tool here is inside of the zip folder you can download from the description of this video. And be right in here. Or as always, you can use this link to check for new versions that have come out. And if you have any questions or run into any issues, either leave a comment down below or come over to the Discord. We'll help you out from there. And I'll see you guys in the next episode. Good night, everybody!